All right, sweet, we got some light. Okay, so as Davis was kind of talking about, we're, we are in a new series of talks called Free People. If you weren't here last week, um, it is a series all about, you guessed it, how to live as free people. And last week, we talked about how this guy named Jesus wants us to live as free people. And, you know, maybe you don't really know who Jesus is. Um, as Christians, we believe that Jesus actually came to earth as both fully man and fully God. And we believe Jesus was on earth for a while, taught, and this was over like 2,000 years ago. And then Jesus actually was crucified. He, was, he died. And then he rose again on the third day, defeating death and de- defeating sin. And he did all of this so that we could live free. But as we kind of learned last week, it's not easy to, to live free, right? Because there's a lot of things that can hold us down. There's a lot of things that can chain us down, right? Whether that's anxiety or comparison or social media or, you know, sports can be super stressful or school or even like our family, you know, it can be really rough sometimes. So there's a lot of things in the world that can chain us down. And tonight, I kind of want to focus on something. Um, I'm just be straight up with y'all. It's not fun to talk about. It's not like the most exciting thing we're going to talk about, but it's really important to talk about because it chains a lot of, a lot of us down. And, and that's sin. Um, you know, maybe you, you've never really been in church before. Or maybe you have and you still don't really know what sin is. But basically, sin is anything that we do that goes against what God has for us, right? So with that in mind, um, me growing up, like when I grew up, I always just thought of sin as this big, super scary word that some people like to throw around, right? Like, they're like, ah, like, growing up, I always heard just like, don't sin, just don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, and you'll be okay, right? But the thing about this is that's impossible. It is impossible not to sin. No matter how long you've been a Christian, no matter how good of a person you think you are, you know, we will always sin. I mean, I sin every single day, and it's something we struggle with. Um, But it's really important to talk about because, like, it's really important to talk about because society and the church have created this misrepresentation of sin. We think a lot of the little stuff is okay, right? Like, ah, don't worry. Like, it's just a small lie. It's all good. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt anybody. Like, dude, don't worry about it. Like, yeah, um, like, I would never actually be mean to somebody on purpose. Like, that was just a joke. Or, or you know what, God, like, you know the way I acted that one time was just a one-time thing. I never do that again. Like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. And, and it makes sense. We think these things are okay, especially at our age, because we're so young. We think we have a lot of time to make up for it. We think we have a lot of time to get back on the right track. Like, so what if we want to have some fun for a little bit when we're younger? But see, here's the thing about that. What you plant now determines what you harvest later. Now, now I get what you're thinking. You're like, Campbell, do not sure if you could tell, but I don't farm. Like, like, I don't even know where to start. If you handed me, like, a shovel or some horses or some cows, I wouldn't know what to do. And I get that. You're like, harvest, bro? Like, what is this, the 1800? Nobody farms anymore, right? Well, first off, that's so wrong. So many people farm. Just go out to Loris where Colin lives. So many people farm. That's, like, all they do. Like, Colin's a huge farmer. I'm just kidding. Please don't ask him about farming. He doesn't know anything about it. But on the real, like, like, Are the decisions we make now will affect what happens in the future. And it may be kind of obvious, but I just want to highlight it. And it's if you're planting good decisions, you're going to experience a good life. Just plain and simple. But, like, what does that even mean? Just think about it. If you're always putting others first, there's a good chance people are going to like you better. If you study harder, you're probably going to get a better grade, right? If you spend more time at the gym, you're probably going to get stronger, become a better athlete. Following Jesus is just like this. The more time we spend in the Bible, the better we're going to get to know Jesus. The more time we spend praying, the better we're going to get to know his voice, right? The more time we spend at church, you know, the better, the better friends we're going to have, the better groups we're going to have, the better people we have to hang around with are going to be better. So with this in mind, I kind of want to ask you all a question, and it's if you will one day harvest what you've planted, what do you want this harvest to look like? You know, I know for me, um, I just want to step into all God has for me, right? And I kind of touched on this earlier. If I want to do that, I need to spend as much time with him as I can. I need to read my Bible more. I need to come to church more. But that's not the only thing. Maybe for you, you're just trying to get into a really good college. So maybe for you, you just need to study harder and make sure your test scores are where they need to be and make sure your GPA is where you need to be. Or maybe you want to play on your varsity soccer team in a couple years. You need to train harder. You need to go practice soccer more. You need to be in the gym more often. Or maybe you yourself just want to get closer to God, right? So you need to spend more time praying and more time at church and more time reading your Bible. You know, what I'm kind of trying to get at is that free people know their now affects their later. Free people know their now 
effects there later. And our boy, Paul, understood this probably almost better than anybody else in history. Um, dude was a stud. He grinded so hard. If y'all don't really remember from last week or you weren't here last week, the, this whole series is centered around a book in the Bible called Galatians. And Galatians was actually a letter, a, <laughs> a letter written by Paul to the people of Galatia. And Paul was actually one of the most influential church leaders in history. And in Galatians 6, Paul says this. He says, you will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. I mean, yeah, it's like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not really trying to harvest decay and death. Like, I'm not really interested in that. That kind of seems like not good to me. But thankfully, Paul keeps going, and he tells us this. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I mean, when I read this, I just think, like, come on, Paul. Like, you better stand up if you're going to preach like that. Like, this is so good. I mean, our main, our main message in base is basically in this, and it's free people know they're now affects their letter. Like, like, don't forget that. We're going to be talking about it all night. It's really important. And if we want to harvest good things, we need to plant these good seeds and these good habits in our life. Or, but the opposite is true. If we plant negative things, if we plant sinful desires, we're going to harvest, in Paul's words, decay and death, right? Like, I'm sorry this is su such a dim subject. You're probably like, okay, boy, why are you talking about this? But you're supposed to be fun and energetic, and I promise you I am, but this is so important to talk about. And the reason it's important to talk about is because, you know, in a couple years, or not a couple years, what I'm 19, in like 20, 30 years when I look back on my life, you know, I'm going to either be thinking I'm glad I did or I wish I had. And my prayer for us is that we think I'm glad I did way more than I wish I had. Because before I really stepped into my relationship with Jesus, right, or even at the beginning of my relationship, um, I found myself thinking I wish I had way more than I'm glad I did. I mean, I wish I had, I, I would have done anything to have somebody tell me this when I was your age because it's so important to think about because, because I would have lived so differently and done so many different things because it was always, I was always thinking like, oh man, like, I wish I talked to my mom differently, right? Or, man, I really wish I hadn't hung out with that group of friends. Or, man, I really wish I just would have stayed home instead of going out tonight. And it's all, like, these are all things we struggle with. You may not struggle with that particular thing, but you struggle with something very similar to it. But the, I found the more I started going to church, the more stronger my relationship with Jesus got, the more I started thinking, I'm glad I did. And it wasn't even that I was making better decisions or anything like that, because I still make some very questionable decisions sometimes, but it was that my perspective had changed, right? It was instead of thinking, oh, I wish I'd talked to my mom, it was like, dude, I'm so glad I talked to my mom today because there's so many people on this earth who don't even get to see their mom every day. And here I am, like, frustrated because, like, I'm, I'm just being selfish, right? Or, or, you know, instead of that, it was like, instead of thinking, man, I wish I hung out with a different group, it was like, I'm so glad I hung out with that group because now I'm thankful for the friends that I have now who love me and care about me and are there for me. So I, maybe that's all you need tonight is a perspective change. Maybe you just need to realize like, hey, maybe what he's talking about is true. Maybe what Paul is saying is true. We, we really just need to realize that the, deci the decisions we, uh, we make now impact what happens in the future. Or maybe you need to kind of just, just kind of, you know, strip it all down and and start a relationship with Jesus. Like, I don't know what you, do, what you need, but please talk to a leader before you leave tonight. I mean, they sacrificed their Wednesday nights to hang out with you guys. I mean, these people have families. They have a lot going on. They have full-time jobs, but yet they choose to be with you every single night. So please take advantage of that. So um, I'm sure you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on right here on my art project that I've been working on for a couple years. Um, I'm just kidding. I figured, just threw this together earlier. Anyway, bad joke, Campbell. Um, I'm sure, so yeah, so I have this picture, right? This picture, there's nothing really special about it. It's kind of wet a little bit. Um, it's empty. You know, nothing really crazy, right? So I want you to think of this, this picture as, as our lives or as our hearts or as my life, right? And then I have these, like, ping pong balls slash golf ball practice ball things that I got at Walmart, Walmart for, like, $1.30. Um, they're pretty cool, right? So I want, you to, I want these things to represent the decisions we make and particularly the, the poor choices we make, right? So, you know, I'm going to just start filling my life with these things, you know. Like, 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 so I'm going to lie to my parents about where I am, right? Because I get frustrated. They're always asking where I am. But it's okay. Like, it's fine. Like, I'm not anywhere dangerous, so it's cool. They really shouldn't care. Or you know what? I'm also going to cheat on this algebra test. But, like, it's cool. Whatever. It's just algebra. Nobody uses that anyway. It's not important. Um, 
Um, and then, you know what? Like, I'm going to get in an argument with my brother, but, like, it's fine. Like, it was his fault anyway. Like, I, it would never be my fault. I never do anything wrong. And then, you know what? Like, yeah, my church friends want to hang out, but, like, they're my church friends. Um, they're not really that cool. I'm just going to keep them at church. You know, I'm going to just, I'm going to hang out with this other group. And then, you know what? Yeah, I may go to a party afterward, but, like, it's fine. Whatever. Don't worry about it. Like, it's all good. Like, I'm making decisions I want to make, so it's cool. It's whatever. Like, it's fine. I'm having fun, right? And before we know it, our lives are full, full of these decisions. They're full you know, of poor choices, and if we plant poor choices, we're going to harvest poor outcomes, right? But see, now, I have this water backstage. I've been working out all week. Hopefully, I can lift it. Ah, I got it. So, I have this water, right? I want you guys to, to imagine this water, this beautiful water, as, as the blood of Jesus. I want you to imagine these, this water as as the stuff of Jesus that can fill our life, right? So I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna pour it in. So now, now instead of cheating on that test, like I'm gonna just study a little bit more. You know, I'm gonna study a little bit more and now instead of maybe lying to my parents, I'm gonna tell them where I am and tell them how much I love them and how much I appreciate them checking in with me. And you know, now maybe instead of going to that party, I'm gonna hang out with my tribe because you know, they really appreciate me and care about me and all that kind of stuff. And you know, now like the more I do that, the more involved I get, the more fun I'm having. And you know, now it's easier to get involved at church and all that kind of stuff, and I'm serving, and I'm serving with kids, and I'm having a blast, right? But there's still some, some ping pong balls here. There's still some golf balls here, whatever you want to call these things. And it's frustrating, you know, because now maybe even though I'm, I've shown improvement in all these areas, I still get in fights with my brother. Or you know what, like maybe I go to school, and I'm not as nice to people as I need to be, or you know, I get frustrated a little bit too easily. Well, the thing about these ping pong balls is that people can see them. And that kind of sounds like a bad thing, right? But Colin's in the back. Colin probably just sees these ping pong balls. He probably can't even tell this water's here. And the thing that's so good about that is that when you come to tribes, when you come on Wednesdays, when you come to church, your tribe members and your leaders can see that. And they're like, hey, I see you're struggling with this, you know? Um, here's what I did when I was your age, and I was struggling with the same thing. Or, Dude, I was struggling with that just a couple of days ago, like, Here's, here's, here's how I dealt with it. Or you know what, like, like, I'm struggling with that too. Let's talk about what we could do better. So now, you know, I'm, I'm getting poured into by my tribe leaders and they're like, dude, you should really get involved. You should get involved. And here's what we could do to, to, to get better and make that easier, right? And you know, instead of, you know, your life's just totally changing now. Instead of getting frustrated at school, you know, everything's getting better. And now instead of like, instead of cheating on tests and stuff, you're, you're, you're studying, doing what you need to be and now you're serving all the time and all that kind of stuff. And before you know it, you're literally overflowing with Jesus' grace. And you're pouring into other people's lives, and you're being that person that was being the person that, that they needed in their life to other people, right? So what I want you to understand is that free people know their now affects their later. See, when we choose to be poured into, when we choose to fill our things with these good things, you know, everything else kind of takes place. And I know it doesn't really seem like that because you're like, man, how could following Jesus be fun? I mean, I have had the most fun years of my life these past three years because I have chosen to take my relationship with Jesus more seriously than anything else in my life. So I don't know what you need to free yourself from tonight. I don't know what you're struggling with, but I highly encourage you to talk to your leaders. They so desperately want to spend time with you. It's what they're here for. I mean, they literally, like I said, sacrifice their nights first, so please talk to them. Or if you want to have a relationship with Jesus, maybe you don't have that yet, please talk to somebody. They really want to talk to y'all. They love y'all. They want to have these conversations. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you for letting me talk to y'all. I'm going to pray in a sec, and then we're going to go on to, to small groups. We're going to have some awesome conversations. Um, but make sure you're here next week. We have an awesome night playing. We're going to celebrate our seniors. They're the greatest, some of my favorite people in the world. Um, so let's go celebrate them. So I'm going to pray. We're going to get out of here and have an awesome night. Dear Lord Jesus, man, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you so much for, for being so good to us and allowing us to come together and, and have these conversations that aren't always easy to have, Lord. And I just pray that you're with us tonight and in and, and the stories we tell and, and in the things we work on to get better, Jesus. And I pray that you help people get involved tonight. I pray that you help people get saved tonight. I pray that you help people step into all that God has for them tonight, Jesus. I love you so much. We can't get enough of you. Can't wait for next week. And in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Y'all have a good